Hi, we've learned about the three basic gas laws which are Amontan's law, Boyle's law, and Charles's law. And these are the equations related to these three laws. You know that the Monton and Charles' law have the same direct relationship while Boyle's law have inverse relationship of pressure and volume. Now, what if the three variables, pressure, temperature, and volume, vary? There's initial and final states for that. Yes, it is possible. And if you change all these three variables, you just have to ensure that your amount of your gases is just constant. So when we combine the three gas laws that we discussed, we already call that a combined gas law. Now, if we have combined gas law, it's just easy to remember because you're combining all the three variables and their placement. So if we notice for pressure alone, for P1, you notice that the common place for that is on the left side and it's on the numerator. Same thing with volume one. So P1 and V1 are always together and it's multiplied and it's on its numerator place. While P2, V2 is more, it's the same as P1 and V1, but on the right side. So in combined gas law, you see the P1 and V1 are together still on the left and right side, respectively. While if you look at temperature, temperature, whether in Amonton or in Charles's law, they're always at the bottom. At the bottom of, if it's a 1, if it's at the bottom of also the 1 or the denominator. And if it's a 2, it's also under the, 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 the 2 subscript. So T1 is always placed as a denominator to both sides of the equation where all the 1s are and all the 2s are. So P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So this is the final expression of your combined gas law. So by just memorizing the combined gas law, you would already know the equation of Boyle, Charles, and Amonton's law. So Boyle is found here, that's P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Charles's law is found as V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, while Amonton's law is found to be P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So it's a complete package of all the three gas laws, the combined gas law. So how do we apply that in a problem? So for example, we have this problem. The volume of a gas-filled balloon is 30 liters at 40 degrees Celsius in 1.75 atmosphere of pressure. What volume will the balloon have at standard temperature and pressure? Now let's look at, let's write first the given before we look at the given solution there. So we're given initial volume of 30 liters and initial temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, which has to be um, added to 273.15 Kelvin so that you will get the answer of around 313.15 Kelvin and an initial pressure of 1.75 atmosphere and what's gonna be your your in final states because it's standard temperature and pressure that means at final state you know that the standard temperature is 273 kelvin and the standard pressure is one atmosphere and so you know that the lacking variable is the v2 so you need to solve v2 from your combined gas law in which it is P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 times T over T2. So you need to cross multiply that so you can more or less get a horizontal equation. And then to get V2, you know that you need to get rid of P2 and T1 because they're together. So you divide P1V1 T2 by P2 T1 because you're getting V2. So your final equation is this. V2 is equal to V1, P1, T2 over P2, T1. Now take note, you have three variables, so please do not confuse the values that you have. Please derive it carefully and look at your given carefully so that you can substitute carefully the values for the right variable. So V1, take note, it's 30 liters. We got that right. P1 is 1.75 atmosphere. T2 is 273 Kelvin, then divided by P2, which is one atmosphere, and T1 is 
This is supposed to be 313.15 Kelvin. So in putting everything in the calculator, you should get more or less the final volume of your gas inside the balloon is 45.8 liters. So that is how you would apply your combined gas law equation in a problem solving. So there's temperature again. What you need to watch out for is that the temperature has always has to be converted to Kelvin before you substitute. And always remember that you begin with writing the given, separating your one and your two so that you can accurately substitute that in the problem. So solve more problems and keep on practicing so that you can get this right. And I hope by now you've already remembered and understand the concepts of the four laws so far and you've already remembered the equations for each of the law so thank you so much please watch out for the next series which is on avogadro's law this has been madam narca saying don't stop learning relearning and unlearning bye for now god bless you